Hello everyone, this is Cody from the Rancor's Brothel. Did you know we recently updated Rancor'sBrothel.com along with our new branding? The updated website includes a detailed archive page, online reviews, a gift shop, and alternate ways to contact the podcast. Check out some favorite old episodes, leave us a review, buy some merch, or drop us a line. All available now at Rancor'sBrothel.com. Don't wait, check it out today. And if you need dice, check out our friends at MetallicDiceGames.com. Friends of the podcast can get 10% off any order using the promo code RBP10. Enjoy the show. The Rancor's Brothel presents The Wild Beyond the Wishlight. Uh, you are at the, I want to make sure you can see through that, you can He's on the water. You are on a dock. You just jumped off of the skiff. Um, were we on a train? Did we dock a train? No, you were on a boat this time. Oh, okay. You parked it, my apologies. You parked the boat. Okay. And, um. Parked boats, dock trains. I don't know, dis- disembarked <laughs> the, uh. I don't know. You can't work for airplane. Uh, no, I use a lot of the same come up terms. With stupid shit, and it's not working. It's <laughs> all stupid anyway. They have this mapped out pretty nicely for for the uh, the jam. I will admit, everything's got you know, everything's marked as like D one, D two, D three, whatever. They've they definitely so. gotten better at labeling yeah, since yeah. the first books. It's insane. No, there were like there are a few in Horde of the Dragon Queen that were mislabeled. Or not labeled at all and like mm-hmm. not even explained. I, I remember when I listened to that, like Cody's like, yeah. there's like four room 13s yeah. and that literally says nothing. <laughs> and he goes, I'm pretty sure. And he goes, go to this room and that room's not even on the map. <laughs> so one of these 13s is supposed to be that room. Good stuff. I should probably read for you what the book states. Yes. Immerse us, please. Uh, oh, I already did read that. That was the you go through the heavy fog, obscuring your vision. You hear croaking voices. You were you were somewhat greeted by some bullywugs mm-hmm. um, on a passing boat before you were docked and um, got off of the skiff. Frogman, they were, just, they were just rowing around in their own boat. Frogman. So you are standing on a dock. Uh, there is a pathway. Well, he's good with navigation, so you know what your orientation is. I am. Ignore him. Roll a survival <laughs> check, I believe. All right. I got a natural 20 plus 2. Mm. I got a natural 20 plus 4. Somewhere. Yeah, I got a nat 20 plus 2. He got a nat 20 plus 4, and I know where I'm going good for Good thing you guys sure. are wasting those 20s. <laughs> uh, you know exactly which direction you're facing. If you are on the dock... Facing inland, you are facing west. There is a path that sort of comes out and curves to the north. It's uh, it's probably not stone. It looks like maybe logs that are sort of embedded into the ground, like you might find at a national park. It's kind of step stair stepped, but it's not like stairs. It's just something to walk on. Um, Us- Usagi, did you did you grab hold of the rope again, or am I still just tied up with a rope dragging behind me? Because during the fight with the rabbit, you let go of it, but we never established if you took it again. <laughs> Didn't we tie you to the boat? No. Yes. Uh, what? That's a great idea. <laughs> that's a, that's the <laughs> argument. We tied you to the boat. Shinopio was grasping the dock <laughs> while these guys were trying to push off. <laughs> guys. Let go. <laughs> I, what are you doing? Guys. <laughs> I'm kind of letting my curse be a little... More than just what it is. That's fine. It's fun. Because <laughs> it's more fun that way. Um, there's a path in front of you. It's kind of the only path you see, really, in terms of actual physical paths that are on the on the ground. I guess we go walk the path. Well, I guess you guys walk the path as I get slowly tugged away by a boat. 
that. <laughs> I I would ask any near bullywogs if they know the way to the hag's hut. Uh, you do not see any standing here. The ones that you saw were sort of on a boat. They passed you and went into, oh. the, into the fog. Oh, so have any of you seen the little dragon with the curly Q mustache? <laughs> There's nobody around to ask. I thought we saw booby bugs. <laughs> when you were on the boat, oh, they well, passed by you and went okay. into the fog away from you. No so are there standing. bully bugs nearby? Not where you're standing, at least. So I guess we follow the path. Follow um, the path. Mm-hmm. As you, I mean, as you follow the path a little ways, and is this in miles? No, it's in square. Okay, this is in square. Uh, ten foot squares. Gotcha. Everything else is in miles in this game. Are we in downfall? Yes, they brought you into downfall. Okay, we are in downfall. As far as they felt safe going. Haven't these guys ever heard of kilometers? It's so much easier. Well, this is based in the U.S., so no kilometers This isn't true, Dang. (laughs) Or anything elsewhere. This was made in the U.S. There's a reason why most of the world uses metric. It's easy. Dumb. They're dumb. (laughs) Metric's easy. We're the best. (laughs) Clearly established. It's like a roughly 100-foot path. Uh, that kind of curves up north, and then you come to the edge of what looks like another stream. Um, you do see some rocks that you might be able to cross across, cross the water across on top of. You know what I'm saying? I don't. Words. <laughs> They're Same words. hard to you are, ford the stream. That's probably the best way to put it. Although I feel like 40, 40 isn't, is more like you're forcing yourself to cross it rather than just jumping across some stones. But uh, yeah, we're skipping. Mm, uh, let me read. Make let a me bunch read, of acrobatics uh, checks for each stone. Let me read D3 because that's where you're standing. Well, it's a stream, uh, not a, a row river. of boulders spaced two feet apart breach the surface of the lake to form a walking path across a 40 foot wide waterway. Wait a second. There's you're a, changing what it is. There's a rock bridge. No, there's stones in the water. You said it was a stream. And boulders. And now there's boulders. And now it's a lake. We're in the Feywild. It's weird. Oh, I guess it does say the lake. It's really not. It's not depicted as the lake. It's depicted as a much more narrow area, more like a stream entering the lake. Well, we're at the creek. (laughs) Similar to what you rode in on. It's just north of where you rode in on. There's a second lake. (laughs) All the water goes directly into the murky lake. How many boulders are we trying to cross here? I believe you said two. Two boulders. Just out making a walking bridge? No. It's a row of boulders two feet two feet apart. Oh, okay. So it's a 40, jumping it's a bridge. 40 foot gap. Gotcha. Which, you know those classic 40 foot streams? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that are a, a nice shallow like 20 feet. <laughs> See? This is why grammar is important sometimes. Nah. Uh, So this isn't a magic stream like before where we all had vivid hallucinations that gave us information about the future. That may or may not come to pass. Mm. Can't forget that. All right. So this strike, I guess. This thing of flowing water a lean i don't know something this this body of flowing water with boulders spaced accordingly do we need to cross because i attempt to cross <laughs> yes do we need to do any checks yes or that's what i was reading for okay, okay. are they <laughs> slickery i wasn't ignoring you i was trying to because it don't because there's two feet it does not specify that you hard. have to make a roll because i feel like we could Somewhat easily cross if they're just two feet, if the water's not right. moving fast enough to cause issue. Yeah, and it's not like it's slimy. He didn't um, mention anything like that. I guess the question is, is who's taking the lead? Because you're kind of going to have to walk single file. Mm, I say the fish man, because if he falls in, he can just swim the rest of the way. You've been, you've been voluntold. <laughs> yeah. Yep. <laughs> lead the okay. way. Would you like to countermand that? <laughs> no. All right. <laughs> Chorus leads. Uh, the way. They are wet, probably a little slick, but you can you can step across them. Um, hmm. When you get to the middle stone, uh, it begins to shake a little, and like you hear grumbling beneath your feet. 
Uh, that God doesn't appear turtle. to be a stone. <laughs> Do you a, stay on or step off? It's a turtle. I'm stepping off of that. Um, when you jump off, the uh, the thing kind of like comes up out of the water a little bit, and it's like a stone creature who sort of grumbles and and wipes the water out of its eyes and says something to the effect of uh, you know not being not showing enough gratitude and stepping on his head is not. Very polite. Of course, say something. For, make up for that. <laughs> say thank you? I don't know. I mean... I don't I go think... stepping on your head. Let him step on your head. <laughs> We're also <laughs> not rock monsters in the middle of a stream river. I didn't, I didn't hide my face <laughs> under the water. <laughs> You're fine. You can let him step on your head in the water. You can breathe. Fine. Don't <laughs> swim away quickly. He's made of rock. What's he going to do? Swim after you? Uh, I wish there was like a nature check to know what this thing is. Is there a nature check of some kind to know what this thing is? You just roll nature. You need monster lore. It's called nature. It's just nature. That's what you check creatures with. Roll nature. Hmm. Nope. I ain't got a clue. A weapon. Uh, no. 22. You're rolling high today. <laughs> Last yeah. week was all ones. Yeah, that was my first roll. Uh, this is a creature called a Galeb Doer. <laughs> oh, I know these things. They're cool. Galeb Doers. Let me see if I can find them in here. Little little stumpy rock dudes. They're cool. They're still cool. They're elementals. <laughs> well, he was taking a nap and you stepped on him. Shouldn't have been hiding. It's fun when you know what they're made of. Cool, cover this up. Little rock, little rock dudes. Little rock dudes. They're cool. He's got a big head. They're... Uh, yeah. This the the it's elemental this. in the elemental <laughs> plane of Earth, they're the things that fall off the 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 main elemental dude. They're just his leavings when he shakes. They're his dandruff. But he's like sounds like parasites. He's like kind of. He's, he's like, uh, you know, do you always go stepping on people's heads without their permission? Not always. Just when I miss their head completely. <laughs> Wait, what? Um, <laughs> he doesn't look happy. Think about it. <laughs> I just worded that poorly. <laughs> we Josh woke up like 20 minutes ago. Yep. <laughs> we did mention grammar earlier. Oh, who wants to talk the rock guy down? I mean, he could just move out of the way so the rest of us can pass. They don't step on you. Right. He crosses his arms and looks at you. How very rude. I will jump over him. <laughs> well, he's a little taller than you think. <clears throat> yeah, they're decent size. These are... Uh, well, it's a medium creature, so he's about... He's your height, essentially. But he's, he's standing out of the water? in the water. We were never informed whether he was in the water or not. He's he in was the water. Last. He, he was like probably like the fifth stone and roughly... Then he's in still the, roughly short. Right the he's still pretty short then. Um, if he's in the water. And he's a bunny. <clears throat> Mr. Rockman, um, what can our friend here do to make up for stepping on your head? He say he just says an apology seems to be in order, does it not? Chorus, apologize for stepping on this this feller's head. I I apologize for stepping on your head, sir. DC twelve persuasion check. He's got plus two in charisma. It's not much of an accepting apology if you have to make a fucking check for you it. Stepped on his head. Well, shouldn't have been standing there. <laughs> you hit that guy. What, he, is, what was 12. it? DC 12 persuasion. So you got it. Yeah, I got a 14. He kind of grumbles and mum, starts mumbling to himself. You don't really understand what he's saying. He's just talking to himself. And uh, he uh, he sort of steps back out of the way. So now there's a, a what is that? A four foot gap between the ne- that stone and the next stone. So which is two not, foot and you just cut out one of It's not as so it easily longer. It would be. It's not be as like easily made with a single stride. You'd be about an eight foot to... gap because it was every two feet or six foot or however long. Oh, no, guys. you're right. Yeah, yeah it's every two feet is a stone, so feet. roughly two feet apart. So, yeah, it's probably an eight foot gap. You're right. You're six, right. Yeah, six to eight. Six to eight feet. So, at this point, you would have to jump to the next step. Yeah, make the, I gotta make the leap. And he just sort of says, then go on. Well, I guess we can proceed. Are any more of your friends over here napping? Uh, he takes a look around. No. Okay. All right, Coral. Or Chorus. 
<laughs> Let's, uh, Coral. Yeah. He already he, crossed over. He crossed it. Did he completely cross, or is it that started after he stepped on the one dude's head? Because he jumped across, stepped I on, and jumped across. I would assume you took one step and had to step back. Uh, so you're going to have to make that jump. Oh, I thought I stepped over. No, nope. I okay. thought you did too. No. Now, like as soon as you step on his head, he he starts crumb moving. So you, well, you we have to change back. our entire plan now because we're getting new information. I haven't even <laughs> tried to cross yet. I'm just watching him go to make sure nothing happened. We still have to figure out whether somebody's tethered to you or not. I've just got a loose we, rope, to my knowledge. Do we Is it a... trust him without a leash? It's either acrobatics or athletics to make the jump. I don't remember. Standing jump is different than a running jump. I'll go first because I would say you're trying to land and fall, keep your balance. I'd say you're doing less the jump, more the balance because this is. Well, you got an eight foot gap to meet. Eh. So it's whatever you can. How, how far can each character far. jump? I can't remember what that's based on. Standing is three plus your strength modifier. If you're standing, you cut it in half. Three plus strength? Three plus your strength modifier. If you're standing, you cut that number in half. Is how far you can get. Okay. I can't make. So that what's jump. your what's your standing jump then, Josh? Three plus your strength mod. What's your strength mod? Um, looks like plus four. Yeah, four plus four. So, if, okay. But he's also able to just swim. If he you, fails, he goes in water. Technically, yeah, you have a better swim option, but don't want to get wet. This isn't salt water. This is gross. Eh. It is very <laughs> disgusting, murky water. Eh. It's water. It's not what so, we're trying to impress anybody. Is it a, is it strength or athletics though? It's strength or, is, or uh, athletics or acrobatics to jump. It's one of those two. It's not just a strength. strength check. Acrobatics you can use if you want to be like make sure they land. So it's a strength check to make the to make the run to mm -hmm. make the jump. Without a running start, athletics. it's cut in half, probably rounded up or rounded down. Up, Must round everything down. So he only has a three. Yeah. So it's strength plus three? It's three plus your strength. He has a seven. You cut it in half. He's got a three is the distance he can make standing the jump. So, so he ain't going to make that jump. You're right, you can only make it three feet, period. Yeah. So, so you're going to have to dive in. Mr. Rockhead, um, would you be able to help us cross this gap maybe? Can't jump it, can you? No. Yes. He can. The rabbit can. Mm, yes, the Haragon can jump quite far. Uh, our big furry friend there and Mr. Mister Gills here could probably swim it. Me and furry can't make that jump. I know I definitely could make that jump on a good day. Mm. I got these little, little wooden legs. <laughs> I won't get very far. I will help you if you do this. O okay. Sing me a song. Uh, Chinopio will try to sing him a song. Performance check. Oh, I've got points in that. Um, I'll make it the same. It's charisma check, so it's a DC 12. Got a 22. Uh, he enjoys your song. Okay, because he's a little lad that enjoys... I didn't want to know, just go with straight berries and cream, but... I could think of a better one that rhymes, but he's a little lad that loves berries and cream and does a little dance while he's doing it. <laughs> he's, he says, like he, he thanks you for the song and, and scoots back in and starts to like bury himself back in the water and says, just step lightly. And okay. he goes, there you go, guys. Goes back under the water. There you go, guys. We can cross. So now you can cross. Be ginger with his step. You're just going to hear him go. Mm. Okay. <clears throat> so. You step across thing with jumping when you make a long jump you cover a number of feet up to your strength score if you move at least oh, 10 it's feet it's cut in half if oh, okay. it's a standing jump so it's score so he had uh, he had plenty of jump distance okay. exactly we didn't oh, well. need that. oh well we, we fixed yeah. it anyway it's one of those it's my little little lad dance he enjoyed it so we're fine pretty pretty dancing with your what dance my little lad dance have you never seen that commercial from way back that is not the what berries I you and cream said. Starburst commercial. No nope. demonstration. Nope. We're good. Really, I know what you're talking about. Yeah, <laughs> it's so good. It, it made a resurgence here in the last like happy couple dance. months. Well, it's like anything. <laughs> happy it's old as new again. <laughs> um, you guys see. Uh, well, here, looming above a ramshackle wooden pier, is a balloon anchored by four thick ropes tied around wooden posts, driven deep into the mire. 
The balloon's bladder expands and sags at irregular intervals as swamp fills sorry, as swamp gas fills it briefly before leaking out through various tears in its patchwork fabric. A bullywog stands near the top of a ladder and is using a long silver needle and a spool of cat gut to sew up one of the gut openings. The second bullywog sorry, a second bullywog stands at the foot of the ladder to steady it. Huddled nearby are three giant frogs whose long tongues snap up passing by and in- passing insects. So did we just stumble across a crashed UFO? This looks remarkably similar to the one that crashed before. They really need to describe these as more hot air balloons, because when you say a balloon, I'm thinking... 99 red balloons I can by. understand. It is a, it's literally a, a, what, a hot air balloon, but... Hmm. You're not wrong. Do we want to go ask him how to get to what's her face? I don't remember her name. Ba- Bassett Tracen. What was it? Bavlona. Ah. Yeah, Slackjaw Lorna. Lona. Old Blighty. Yeah, Slackjaw. <laughs> so, so, who's going to approach our friends of Frogmen? Anyone can the one on the ground just kind of looks over at you and looks back up, making sure he's keeping everything steady. He doesn't seem to regard you much at all. Well, everybody seems to want to talk to the rabbit. Do you fellows know the way to Bavlonas? What language do you speak? All of them. <laughs> <laughs> what language do you speak? I speak common, sylvan, and elvish. Oh. Um, it takes you until you get to sylvan before he responds. So are you asking about where Bavlona is? Yeah. Uh, he just kind of looks over at you and says, keep walking and see the king. Mm. So, so where's the king? I don't see how far away is that. He just points. <laughs> Chinopio goes the other way. Like I said, did anybody pick up your leash yet? <laughs> Again, it's just dragging behind me in the, the current state. He says, he says, keep following the path, two stops. Okay. Wasn't aware there was a king. That's new information. A stop? Are there like... He just kind of looks at you. Platforms? He just kind of looks at you like, well, you aren't from around here. Is the little curly Q mustache dragon around? Sorry, what? Is the little curly Q mustache dragon around? I'm asking them. Oh, you're asking them? Yes. Um, The one sewing stops sewing and looks down at the other one and then looks over at you and says... You mean the little bastard that stole the balloon? I just saw one that, and he had it said he was headed this way. Well, he wouldn't have stolen a balloon. He was in a cage, I'm pretty yeah. sure. Yeah, you know. So it'd he been, was uh, captured. Yes, helped by our old friend Willywog. Oh, uh, Willywog died. They look at each other again, a little more forlorn this time, and then he just kind of goes back to sewing quietly. Oh, and the one on the ground looks at you and just says, "Haven't seen him." Oh, okay. I was about to say, but that didn't answer my question. <laughs> didn't exactly make the king very happy, that's for sure. Mm. Well, I guess, do we want to start headed towards said yeah, king? Yeah, let's go towards two stops. Uh, as you continue to follow the path, and literally, this literally is path. Like, you, you can go off of it, and you'll probably it, just get lost in the fog. Is it like, yellow? Uh, it's not. Oh. But, like, everywhere you go, there's a clear walking path or stones or something. Um, and as you are going, you 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 went sort of north off of where you initially started. You are now turning east, like it's start, as if you're going around the lake. Everything is is shore side. You're on the shore. You can still see the lake. It's okay. Not gone. Still murky fogginess. Absolutely. <clears throat> is the lake gross? Very. Okay. Um, the next place you come upon is a wooden structure. Is that a frog croaking? Probably. You do hear a lot more frog voices kind of echoing, not too far off, probably. Uh, This wooden structure stands on stilts above the lake. It is topped by a steep conical roof made of thatch. Smoke curls up from a hole at its apex. Its windows are blacked out, and the air carries the smell of burned wood. A clothesline attached to one corner of the building exterior is hung with a variety of frayed patchwork garments. 
And the clothesline seems to go towards the middle of the lake and just disappears into the wood, into the fog. Um, there's a clothesline that's just disappearing. You hear, <laughs> just knocking on a door. You hear a bullywog like scampering, yelling, "Grab a bucket! We have to put the fires out." Do we see any sign of fire? Uh, yeah. Where there's smoke. Okay. <laughs> we just see smoke. Do we just see the fire? water and put the frog out? <laughs> Well, there was smoke coming out of the um, top of the building. Is the rest of the building on fire? You're you're standing outside of the structure, so if you walk in, I'll read the next box. Okay. <laughs> I guess, do we want to go inside? There's a talk of a fire. Chidopia's going to try to go in. All right, Open you go the door. inside. Uh, the room is a charred mess. Hazy smoke hangs over scattered piles of burned and broken shelves intermixed with whatever those shelves contained. Wisps of smoke snake into the air from several spots where the smoldering wreckage threatens to to ignite. A distressed bullywog in a leather smock scurries around the room with a bucket of water whose contents spill out over the sides in his haste. Well, don't just stand there! And as he's, he's like running back to the lake and back inside and he's trying to put out these embers. I mean, a please would go a long way. <laughs> he, go, he splashes water and looks at you and says, Please, and then goes back out. <laughs> okay. Are there any like buckets or pots around? Yeah, you can find another bucket. At least one more bucket. Chinopio grabs a large mug <laughs> and runs for water. Just can you find water? <laughs> I'm just running after the bully wug. The rope trailing behind me. Still um, attached to him. I never untied it. I have trouble with knots. There is a low workbench. Sorry, there is a low workbench, which is like the only piece of undamaged furniture in the room that has three wooden buckets on it. Two of them are already filled with water. Oh. So you can grab those buckets and do what you will. I grabbed them. All right. <laughs> I grabbed something sizable for me. Um, so is there any active fire? Or is everything just smoldering? It's smoldering, but you can see that it's sparking like it's going to reignite. I feel like the swamp water is not helping put out the fire. <laughs> it, it just it doesn't seem to be helping at all for some reason. He 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 splashes it, and then you know by the time he gets to the next section, the other section seems to almost dry up and start to smolder again. Mm. Magic so fire, magical fire, yeah. Uh, wait, is this fire spread around in places? Like it's all about except for the work. It's bench? in various areas of okay. the structure. Yes, most of the structure is burnt out from the inside. Okay. Aside from the one workbench that doesn't seem to have too much damage on it, where the buckets were sitting. Mm. Mm. Well, I don't have detect magic, so I can't really see what's going on. But I think we all have the same assumption of it's magical fire. I have detect magic. Oh, you do? I do. Well, if you want to burn it. Yeah. All I have, so to do to is take, all I have to do is take a nap and it's back up to normal. It's true. Just take a quick Just got a nap. Got a point. Should I? Do we want him to detect, see if it is some kind of enchantment or sure. evocation? Yeah. What uh, do you do you when cast you cast it? it? You don't, you don't uh, detect any kind of magic. You detect uh, transmutation. Mm, that's not good. Are we turning the wood into fire? Is that what's happening? <laughs> Charcoal, maybe. You, you detect transmutation in various spots of mm. the uh, where where there is still a hot. A hot patch that seems to be threatened to ignite. And he just he's just like, I can't seem to get it out. 82. Seems to be magically on fire. Do you, you realize that? Uh, and he's just like really out of breath and says, well, if I don't stop, or if I stop, it'll just simply completely reignite. I can't afford to have the building fall down. This is our balloon factory. Right, but obviously what we're doing what is not putting the fire out so we probably need to see another option well what's your option well i don't really care so you know. <laughs> we don't really have a way to put the fire out ourselves. not my building <laughs> when did this fire start i mean completely deprive the place of oxygen but that probably still doesn't matter with magical fire he says oh one of our friends and some crazy little 
pink dragon thing started it about yesterday when they stole one of our balloons. Oh, that's how it is. So I use my holy amulet, hold that up, and activate the spell using that. There you go. And it's like, ping! Yeah. <laughs> I just grab my amulet, well, detect- I just go, and it's like, there we go, magic. You do you do detect transmutation on those areas. Little, little ignition spots. So it's like the candles you can't blow out. It's the same idea. Anybody have to spell? So this is magical fairy dragon fire. Maybe. Does anybody well, have to spell or anything? Nope. Huh? That's not good. It's like a level two spell. I don't got that yet. I believe. I don't get that till level three. Hmm. You need to be level three to use level two. It's a second level spell. Level three is when you unlock the second. Ah, level. gotcha. I don't know. Should we just ch- chuck the burning things into the lake? I guess. Nope. I don't get to spell magic. I mean, either. you have buckets. You could. I guess you could try to scoop up the. F- the embers is that what you're saying no i mean like there's pieces of furniture that is on fire right trying to get it's not on, fire. Really on fire it's like smoldering and it's uh it's more um well yes it's furniture but it's sort of like what's left of it like it's ashes but it's got like chunks of stuff in it that could easily reignite just like if you watch a campfire go down, mm-hmm. if you hit it with something just right it might reignite well, i mean i suppose them. if we could yeah use the buckets then to scoop up the areas that seem to be reigniting and try to, try to just separate them. Pinch them. Um, yeah, okay. like dump one of the things of water on it Who so wants it's to try flattened, it? scoop it up, and then throw it out. Chinopio will give it a shot. <laughs> Chinopio, the wooden boy who goes towards the fire. <laughs> yes, the magically um, wooden boy. This is going to be hilarious. You, grab a, you take the bucket and you go to scoop up mm-hmm. these ashes. Um, and you successfully you know, scoop up the, the burning or, you know, smoldering portion mm-hmm. uh, when out of it pops out a uh, a red hot coal and suddenly five other red hot coals start to pop, pop out uh, and you can roll for initiative ooh per your roll of transmutation I got you would understand two. that these are animated ooh. coals animated coals yeah. yeah. yep ruined my good rolls he's back to his low rolls did you roll a one again got a two I got a two no, it's not a one yeah hmm Initially. It's a well, it's a four total, but oh god, yeah. oh that's not too bad. I had a it's better than a four if it's not too bad. <laughs> it's seventeen. Oh, like I said, it's that's, not too bad. <laughs> it's above average, <laughs> right? Try. Nine, Ooh, lowest you've ever had. Yeah, yeah you in this get, campaign, you have a massive modifier too, don't you? Josh, twenty-two. Uh, sir, Tyler, sorry, <laughs> you're fine. 22. 22. I rolled at 20 again. Total of a four? A total of four. I've rolled impressive two today. For not important rolls. I got one on survival to find direction, which my character isn't good at. He got lucky. I'm surprised uh, you're you still with first, us. Tyler. You got a bucket in your hand. There's a an animated coal right in front of your face. All right. Since we know what these are, do we have any idea of weakness? It's a living thing that starts fire. Indeed. Um, they're very, very tiny, which means their AC is quite a bit higher. Because they're hard to hit. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Well, I take my axe, turn it sideways, and use it as a fly swatter. <laughs> you can try that on your turn. <laughs> I got a spell slot. I'm going to cast sleep. Okay. Nope. Oh. Try and knock him out. Wait a second. I don't have an axe. Uh, in this how big is this building? I should have had the axe on. Hmm. I always forget what it was. It's about a 30 foot is. circle. This is the space. Pretty you're sure in. my area is pretty large. I think it is. I think last it's time it's a 20 foot circle. All right. So you could almost get this entire thing yeah. from, the, from the center. Yep. You would easily be able to get them all in it. All right. And then I rolled 14, 23. 28 health HP. So based on whatever's lowest, knock it out and then go until, since they're all the same thing, if 28 knocks them all out, they're all asleep. And that's a total for however much health they all have. Uh, you, your total was 28? Mm-hmm. So all but one will drop. Okay. So they're all, do they cool off? Pr- yeah, probably because okay. they're asleep. All right. So we knocked out four down. That was my thing. 
There's five of them? How there close were together are they? Yeah, there were five. So now there's one standing there. Now that doesn't, does his HP come off or no? H, it, the HP does not come off them. Okay. They're asleep because so he's still, it took it, their That HP. one's still at full HP. It's the, just not yeah, asleep. It's just gotcha. not asleep. The others are asleep and they are unconscious. So any hit on them is a critical. That's fine. They're an advantage to hit and they take crit damage. Uh, it is Alex's turn. Okay. Um, how close together are they? I mean, you're in a 30 foot circle. You could walk up to any of them. So you could walk up to the one that's still lit if you wanted to. Hmm, I'm not... doing this theater of the mind because I don't feel like drawing out this 30 foot circle. Everything's in the theater of the mind for me. <laughs> nah, nah. I was just curious if they were clumped together or not. No, I have they, a no the, the, the spots were kind of spread around. Like, uh, ping, 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 ping. They all hop out random. I gotcha. But again, like it's not like you can't hit the one that's in front of you. Well, okay. depending on what your role is. Yeah, well, I was just going to, if they were close together, use my shield and just... I'm not going to lie. Sleep is becoming one of my favorite spells. All right, mm -hmm. well, I guess I'll just... Uh, it's so good. And I get it for free because I'm Archfae Warlock. I just get that spell. I don't know. I guess I'll just attack the one that's awake so that I don't wake up the other ones before the other guys in my group can attack. Good. Okay. Way to not be selfish. Well, I have a paladin. <laughs> mm, nope. What'd you roll? One. You chop a toe off. He has advantage. Oh, that one's not asleep, right? You no, take the awake one? Not, yeah. Okay. There's a reason for that. You lose a toe. Uh, next is me. <laughs> you well, never... got a bonus action you want to do. You know, you never attack, hurt yourself, but you always hurt us whenever one is rolled. You are permanently crippled now. I'm just being facetious. The... I completely understand that, but <laughs> so anyway, um, yeah, unless you got a bonus action, I do have do. a bonus action, but I don't want to use it. It's not exactly a hefty fight, so you may want to hold on to some things. Yeah, no. if it's like a spell that you got to cast or something. I think most of your smites are you cast them as a bonus and then you mm -hmm. make them. Fit um, yeah. Since you attacked it, it will attack you. How does this work? Um, is my shaggy for fireproof? I hope. I presume these guys are unarmed. Is it not labeled as like an animated object? Oh, here we go. It's down here. Oh, never a good sign. No, they're they're plus to hit. Is surprising. <laughs> All right, so he's gonna basically jump out at you. I just think of a little tiny thing. It's so high pitched. Does uh, so a fourteen hit? No. No. <laughs> okay. Uh, then it bounces. It kind of just bounces off of your armor and hits the ground. Yeah, he's got heavy armor and a shield. <laughs> Tink do. Ow. <laughs> yeah, basically. I kind of hope it just hurts itself running into me. Troy. Um, How long does sleep last? Until they're interacted with. Or basically, unless we do something, it's going to last in, for a good while. I think it lasts like minutes. Okay. What does interacted with mean? If it takes we damage. attack it, or the one that's awake tries to wake them up by physically like slapping, they have them to physically or jostling them. Yeah, you well, have to well, physically interact with them, or okay, them again, attack. attacking and physically interacting are two very different things. Attacking is like you roll something. Why interacting not? is go over and like poke it, shake it awake. Yeah, that's literally like it lists as like jostling them. What awake. do you want to do? I'll pick them up and remove them from the place. That's on fire. I would give you. I would give you a dex check to see how careful you could do it without waking them up, if that's what you want to do. It says, uh, "We still have one awake to deal with." True. So, mm. yeah. Well, if you're able to remove the other four, it's one less thing, I guess. Yeah, it's this creature starting at the lowest HP. The creature effect spell falls unconscious until the end of the spell, which is a minute, so 10, ten rounds. Uh, the sleeper takes damage, or someone uses an action to shake or slap the sleeper awake. Right. And that's how you wake it up. So if you're not trying to wake it up, he might make you have a roll, like slide a hand or something maybe do that. It's so like how easily you can pick it up without waking it. Roll it into the bucket and just collect them, throw Should them in the lake. initiative for the bully walk, huh? The bully will gonna attack us because we're killing its evil fired charcoals. <laughs> no, I just they like one. definitely this... change out spells when I get to higher levels because I can only know four spells outside of the ones that are given to me. I'm gonna keep hex, and I'm gonna definitely switch out arms of Hadar. So I really don't like that one. Okay. Mm. So what do you want to? 
I will. I suppose attack the the one, one that's awake. Go for it. Oh god, that's not gonna hit either. What's the total? Eight. If you only had ten more. Wow. Um, <laughs> yeah, they're tiny. Yeah, they're very, very tiny. Uh, it is on. Uh, uh, it's the bullywork's turn. He's just he's just getting buckets. Oh, he, he's gonna get a bucket and splash it. Try to splash the the uh, creature. As long as it's the awake one. Yeah. Come on, bullywog. The others have cooled Use your off. Brain. They're just kind of laying on the ground, chill. I'm sure, if they wake up, they reignite. It's kind of like the uh, Square Enix bombs. Okay. Um, he splashes that thing with water, and it it hurts it. Like it's it's not happy. Hmm. I like how this random NPC bully wug's doing more work than the giant cat and the rabbit man. I mean, it's, <laughs> it's, it's fire, so water makes sense as an immune. As yeah, a, as a, a weakness. Immune, a weakness. Uh, Josh, you can act. I can finally go. You can. Yes. Whoa! Stop rolling low. Roll like you did at the start of the session. I guess I'm going after the awake one too. Go for it. <laughs> That's a little bit better. Oh, well, yeah. That's is what, it an 18? What is the number? That's a 15. So you got a 19 if it's yeah. an attack. You hit it. Yeah. Roll, roll damage. What are you hitting it with? Your trident? Going to skewer it with the giant fork? <laughs> <laughs> Ooh. A damage. It dead. You killed it. It shatters into tiny bits and smolders out. The rest of them are asleep at your feet. And the bullywug says, quick, scoop them up, throw them in the lake. I, again, a, a please goes a long way. And he's worried as hell. I don't care. Like, we've come to help and like we're being ordered around. Like, uh, nah. Yep, using the ease of my hand, I try to pick up however many you'll let me. But I got a 21 on sleight of hand to just gently pick them up. I'll... I'll say you can just scoop them all up one by one okay. with a 20. That's fine. Bah, Place nice. them in a bucket nicely or something. Yeah. yeah I got you. And like, here you go. <laughs> uh, he, thanks, he thanks you and takes them outside and you hear, <laughs> and you hear him kind of skitter into the water. Okay. And he walks in again, still like breathing heavy and says, thank you. Thank you. Oh, oh he didn't say please. He said thank I you. I wasn't That's sure that this was ever going to go out. I was We've like, been fighting so this wait. fire all night <laughs> and all day. Uh, he says here. Uh, he kind of goes Sorry, through his yesterday. pockets. He goes through his pockets. What's his name? I think he's named. It's okay. We don't care. Uh, What's he giving us? <laughs> he 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 pulls out a little brooch and hands it hands it to one of you. Chinopio takes the brooch and says, "You uh, already have the dagger. Give it here." He says, "He says, please wear this when you go see our king. Uh, tell him that Duke Ikarin sent you." Duke Ikarin. Duke. This is okay. Who wants the brooch? No, no, you picked it up. Now you're the sacrifice. All right, I just stick it into the wood of my form. <laughs> How do you spell Ikrin? I K, or sorry, I C K R I N. Ikrin. Duke, as in like a title, or is that your name? It's not specified in this book. I'm gonna presume it's a title. Okay. It is. They are. Uh, well, there's a king, right? So. You can presume that it's... I mean, there's a king, but this is also the first we've heard of a king, so... True. He, We've heard know. of queens, right? That's the queen of the Fey Realm was in the castle elsewhere. It's not a... Well... Was she, she a queen? Called a queen? Uh, some people call her a queen, yeah. Okay, because in my head I keep thinking she's... It's queen. not necessarily that she is a queen, but they, they call because her that because queen, it's right? a palace. Gotcha. But then she again, you would known as the arch just, that's, that's all the info you got. So that was a fun, tiny little encounter. I challenged it greatly with putting four of them to sleep. <laughs> yeah, no, absolutely. I like, love sleep. <laughs> water, you have to hit them directly with the water. Just throwing it throwing it on the embers doesn't mm-hmm. help because they're like cut and covered. Technically, yeah. they're in full cover at that point. Uh, okay. So literally water kills them or does more damage to them. And it's uh, they only have six hit points. Mm. But they're, they're just eight, hard 18, to hit. They're an 18 AC yeah. because they're that small. They have what? Your AC. <laughs> just crazy. Um, Would the water consider be Troy considered has a look splash on his face. damage? Yeah, I know. You look at you and say something. I always have a look on my face. Well, uh, one that's more like... <sighs> that's how faces work. He's born with it. <laughs> he 
says, is there anything else I can help you with? You said this was started by a small dragon and a friend of yours for stealing a balloon. That doesn't quite make a lot of sense. Yes, yes. Uh, Sir Tavlar, I think his name was. They ran away from, I believe, Bavlorna's cottage. I presume that's where the cage came from. And probably in fear, defied our king's orders not to take a balloon and did so by distracting us with his fire. Oh. So it was a distraction. Correct. It also, per the structure of this so far, you know, few areas you hit, um, this is the balloon factory, mm-hmm. not where the balloons would launch from. That was the previous area. Mm-hmm. This where would have we blocked saw people from getting it. to them a little easier. It would have been not only a distraction, but like a fiery gateway to get through. Kind of a chokehold. Right. How big is this place? Uh, how big is the actual entire area or no, the small building like, you were in? Yeah, you say it's a factory for the balloons, but it, you described it as a small house on stilts. You see a large canister. It's like a 30 by 30 square. Or a circle, sorry. <laughs> 30 by 30 circle. They just fill the air. Oh, There's like a little, um, it actually looks like a little Mickey Mouse upside down. 30 by 30 is a lot different than, I, I, I assumed a 30 wide building, which significantly smaller. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, I was thinking small hut, and this is, yeah. Well, bigger. It's, well, yeah, it's so 30 wide, feet across. 30 across, 30 high. Well, yeah, no, it's absolutely very tall, for sure, because they're building balloons. But, yeah. Uh, but there are also, like, there's a window you can peek out, and if you guys were going in and out getting water, you would have noticed there's, like, a deck outside that's actually, like, two so- smaller half circles. It looks like an upside-down Mickey Mouse in the photo. Oh, nice deck. Hardwood deck. The hedge work's really well done. Makes the deck look a lot bigger. Yep, I'd nail that deck. Nobody? Juvenile. Polish it up. <laughs> I don't think anybody wants to deal with that right now. Put a nice deck seal around there. I want to make sure there's no crabs crawling around on this deck, though. No crabs. Oh, good. Different kind of water. <laughs> Different kind of water. Crawfish, maybe. Maybe crawfish. <laughs> <laughs> no freshwater crabs? Troy, it's only getting worse. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, Yusaki uh, commits seppuku. <laughs> Finally, <laughs> God. <laughs> it only took you three sessions. All right, roll up a new character. <laughs> um, out the opposite door that you came in, you see um, what appears to be uh, a very narrow like drawbridge, essentially going across another portion of uh, the lake. We don't see any kind more of, angry rock guys, do we? You don't see rocks. You see you see this sort of drawbridge, but it is pretty well shrouded in, in the fog. At Across ha- the lake? About, about halfway through. Mm. Yeah, you, if you were to take this bridge, you can t- you can tell where you're standing. This, this bridge goes over por- a portion of the lake. Oh. So it uh, is, you uh, can see parts lower and the other parts like raised. Yeah, it's almost, it's almost directly east at this point by, for those who rolled a survival check earlier. Man. Is it the second stop on this trail? Because that's what we were told to take to see the king. Yeah, two stops. If you were to ask, if you were to ask Duke, he would tell you the king is across the bridge, not on the bridge. Well, I wouldn't expect him to be on the bridge. But next stop over. That wasn't my question. <laughs> so we got one well, more stop. You got the king is also a troll across the bridge to get to the king. His throne. He, he, the Duke will tell you that his throne and his people are all there. Okay. And you would probably again definitely hear more voices closer than they were before. What are the chances his throne's a giant lily pad? Not bad odds. Either that or another stump. Well, I keep proceeding across the said bridge. Is the bridge lowered to where we can cross the yeah. bridge? Okay. Yeah. I know you said we were on it, but I know it was a drawbridge. It's like one side's up and like, like the bridge that you haven't seen is where they raise for boats. Right. Uh, as you start to go across the bridge, what you see kind of startles you for a second. All the way across as far as you can tell, which is only 20 feet for you at this point. Mm-hmm. Um, roughly every, you know, two or three feet, there is a, uh, a spike uh, or a stake, if you will, uh, with a bullywog's head on it. Thank you all for listening. The Wild Beyond the Witchlight is co-written by Stacy Allen, Will Doyle, Ari Levich, Chris Perkins. You can find us online at rancorsbrothel.com, on Facebook, 
at Fans of the Rancor's Brothel. 